Well, welcome everybody. As I said again, today we're going to, uh, I'm going to introduce a, a topic that's actually quite a large one. And it, it gives me an opportunity to uh, today, the, this uh, overcoming negative emotions to mention, because it's such a very large topic that we're going to be starting a class series. I realize that you know, 10, 15 minutes is hardly enough to even get started. But we're going to be introducing a class series starting next week, next Monday. Typically, often, you know, I, I we do these classes on Monday more, on Monday evening. And uh, so we're going to be starting another one next week, next Monday, on this very topic of how to overcome these harmful emotions. And I think we don't need to really explain what these harmful emotions are. I think we all know fear, anger, hatred, worry, jealousy, envy, all of, all of these all of these things that you could say take us away, take us outside of ourselves and actually cause us pain. You could say that anything that degrades our inner happiness is could be defined as unhealthy. And of course that's physical. We have mental, emotional and spiritual, we have to be healthy on all different levels and removing those things gently and steadily that block us from being able to have that which we really all of us want, that inner happiness, that sense of communion with, with God. And, and I think in a sense, you could say that if we were to say harmful emotions are basically those things, it's the heart's energy going outward under the direction of uh, emotional reaction to life and response to, to that. But I think in that very statement lies the cure. In other words, it's the energy going out into the world rather than you could say upward toward a higher understanding. And how do we know they're harmful? Well, it's pain suffering because harmful emotions are those things that emotions those energy going outward into reacting to things in life that causes pain that cause disharmony there's divisive and some i guess you could say that some people think this is just very natural of course you're going to get angry somebody crosses your path in a wrong way looks at you funny all of these things but we know with a little bit of experience in life that eventually these things they contract the heart they contract the heart's feelings when the heart's feelings are going outward there's sometimes you feel there's a great release it actually can be pleasurable in in its own way but we know as time goes by once that initial pleasure that initial release of that emotion goes away it leaves an empty feeling or there's a sense of contraction or you look around the results of what happened you don't feel happy and other people unfortunately get caught up in it they don't feel happy so i think when we speak about harmful emotions today i just like to mention just a few things so one of the important things to understand and then maybe and if you wanted to perhaps you could come to our classes that we have next week we can start to look really at a little bit more in depth into the solutions but I think there's a few things that we need to first do. We have to recognize if we're unhappy, if uh, if the way we react to life is leading us into pain and suffering, and we feel the heart itself being contractive or a restless, uh, all of those things we identify with being emotion, then we, we really, the first step to being able to cure anything is to be able to recognize maybe we have a problem, maybe there's a better way. And what emotions or feelings do we drive us to that? And I want to just make it very clear from the beginning that emotions and feelings are not the same thing. I mean, emotions are an aspect of feelings, but they're the feelings that are going in a way that ultimately is going to lead us away from what we really want. Whereas those feelings that are turned in the direction, very same energy, you might say, on the basic level, that we can turn in a positive direction, they bring us what we really want, which is happiness, inner happiness, harmony, health. 
And we know that oftentimes mental unhealth, physical unhealth often have their roots or you could say they certainly have their companion in emotional ill health. Emotional energy turned and that energy of the heart turned in the wrong direction that causes pain and unfortunately cause other people pain as well. So there are a few, you know, so often we become entrenched in these modes of behavior. They're a matter of, you could say, well, I mean, there'd be deep seated habits year after year, lifetime after lifetime, a roller coaster. Uh, it's really what it is, a roller coaster of the likes and dislikes of our emotions. And we can see this in ourselves. But the real question is, we can see it, that's the first step, becoming aware of it. And then the larger question is, what do we do about it? We have to change. And of course, before we can change, we have to want to change, to emotionally heal. And I think this, all of us want this, but it's not so easy, you might say, to come to that. And what do we do about it? Well, that's, like I say, what we're going to explore in these series of classes that we're going to name. But I want to give some hope to this, is because when we do, when we recognize that we do perhaps have a problem, that that very recognition that there's something amiss, that my I, I don't have calmness, I'm not feeling well, I'm unhealthy in this way, the very recognition of that opens up the door to being able to do something. And when we recognize it, we'll find in that very recognition, the universe itself will begin to come to our aid. And if we want it to, if we're, if we're willing to follow up, it'll come to our, um, to our aid, but we have to initiate that. So I want to, I, I want to summarize in just a, a few things to be on the lookout for. One of the first things, as I say, is let's learn to recognize our feelings. This is something that's known as emotional intelligence, learning to be able to recognize our, our emotions for what they are. And we all have them. There's no need to judge them. Oh, I got angry today at my child or my husband or my wife. And we feel guilty about it. Well, I guess guilt is okay if it, if it motivates us to ch change. But really, the, the, uh, there's no need to judge. There's no need to feel bad. No need to feel guilty. The important thing is, what do I do? How do I feel about it? Uh, is, uh, now, you don't have to think why. You know, one of the things is, well, I'm angry. Wouldn't you be angry too if X, Y, or Z happened? There's no need for guilt. And there's also no need for justification either. It's just somewhat fruitless uh, why I got angry. The fact is we did. And what, what are we going to do about it? We felt fearful to be able to step back and let's look at these things and see what can we do about it? But a, a few simple steps in the little time that we have here this morning that to give us uh, just some insight of where we can go upon this. The first step you could say is to recognize. Recognize, oh, I've got that feeling. And this emotional intelligence, the ability to tune in to our own feelings and recognize them. You know, some people have a hard time doing this. They don't, they, they can't, they're not aware of their own feelings. They feel somehow that some, somehow if I do that, oh, there's something wrong with me. And they deny the feelings that they have. And we're not, I'm not saying that they're justified or unjustified. Just recognize. Because once we can recognize those feelings that we have, one, we can do something about it. And the first thing to do is to stop. If you see we're going in this old direction again, I've done it a million times, first thing is recognize and then stop. And then very simply, if we're a yogi, what do we do? Take a deep breath. When you're fearful, let's say, or something, somebody's bugging you and you're really getting upset, take a beat and, and observe what's happening. What's happening. Then go forward and proceed with something. And now that's, that's what we're going to get in more next week, but that's something we might do. But 
if you do just these first steps, it leads you to the position where we can actually choose something that is healing. But just the recognition in, the, in something of a dis, dispassionate way, we can recognize something. And one thing I'd like to just in today is remind you of that prayer that we often recommend to uh, say that is a something we can do. That healing, that healing prayer that we say when, when difficulties, we have an emotion that is unhealthy. We pray, Lord, fill you know, the situation. They feel, you know, it's uh, something's wrong. Perhaps another, you're angry with another person. I think one of the first keys is to understand about emotions is the emotions are causing us to inwardly, where that emotion is going out, but we be, begin to focus on an enhancement of our self-involvement. I'm feeling this way, I'm this way, I'm this, I know that. You know, now recognizing it, you see, that energy is going, you could say, in the wrong direction, and it's a certain self-involvement. I don't like it. It's at the root, of course. And if we can find ways to, instead of focusing our, our own dilemma, our own selves, one of the techniques is to learn to project outward, to think of other people's welfare, other people's, how they feeling, what's going on with them. So that prayer that we often use, if you're feeling angry with somebody, if you can turn that ink, stop and pray for healing of the situation. Now, I'm going to say pray for that other person, let's say, or pray for, but if you can't do that, pray for the situation. Lord, fill this situation or fill so-and-so with peace and harmony, peace and harmony. Fill so-and-so with peace and harmony, peace and harmony. Fill this room with peace and harmony. Fill this situation with peace and harmony. Whatever you choose, fill, and then eventually, we recommend that you say that 10 times with deep concentration and the devotion of the heart, calling upon the divine presence in that moment. And then conclude with whatever number you've chosen, let's say 10, take half that number, five, Lord, fill me with peace and harmony, peace and harmony. Lord, fill me with peace and harmony peace and harmony. And maybe a little bit later, we can actually do this together. And you'll find that that's one of the first things to be able to, to bring about some resolution. If you can do it, and, and we recommend you do it multiple times during the day, when that will just when that emotion begins to the memory starts to bring it back immediately, recognize it, and stop. Take a deep breath observe what is happening and then do something and i'm suggesting do something here don't get into the mental reasoning oh it's this this is the reason that's the reason the mind will just keep spinning first you have to bring yourself to a balanced calm state and then there comes a time when yeah you can look at the situation and these these are things that you'll begin to notice when we are in a state of emotional upset, you'll notice there are certain things that happen. And we can train ourselves. That recognition process is a learned behavior. We can be alert. Contraction, that tense, that contractive feeling we feel here. Learn that. What's the difference between a contraction and expansion? learn the difference. And then we can learn to be able to uh, notice it right away. What is uplifting? What is that feeling like? And then from that, we can then proceed. Be aware of your feelings. That's where we start. Good or bad, without judgment. Learn to recognize in your life the little symptoms. And, you know, an action may be absolutely justified and right, seemingly, logically, but when the feeling is not right, you know, you've often done that. We find ourselves, I did it, 
I, it just seems so right. But there's that, whoops, there's that little feeling inside. Learn to delay the reactive process. Good example, and I think we all have done this uh, email. You get this feeling. Somebody writes you something. It's a little bit off. And you go to, and you immediately you want to respond. Is that so? And how many emails have you written that you sent off? And you go, oh my God, <laughs> can I recall those emails back? You know what my solution is on that is if I if somebody's written me something, maybe I might if I get upset, I never send it. I put it in the draft box and I look at it the next day. Yeah, oh, that sounds right. And then I send it off. And, and, oh, and I'm glad I didn't send that impulse. In the ability to control your impulses, you know, this is one of the things that people statistically, they have, those people who have poor impulse control, ultimately get themselves into deep trouble. And we don't want to be like that. And big ways and small ways. And so learning to be able to, to delay, stop, I'll do it, I'm going to respond to that email tomorrow. And then we find can watch the movie. We all enjoy going to the movies. Why do we like to go to the movies? Drama. Some people like horror shows. Oh my God, what's going to happen? It's because we're detached from it. We're watching the movie. And so we can begin a little, become that, bring that a little bit in. And you notice also how you have a great talent. We all seem to do to give friends good advice. But we don't seem to have that same ability to give that same advice to ourselves. Why? It's because we're detached. We need that certain impersonal distance to be able to get that. And of course, what does the yogi do? We gain that impersonal distance, not just to other people, but to ourselves. We step back. And the insidious thing, of course, about emotions, you keep indulging them and they become a habit. Lifetimes. Subconscious patterns develop. But the good news of all of this is energy in motion can be changed. And so this is what we want to focus on. And next week, if we have a chance, uh, please join me. And we're going to go into these things in a little bit more depth. And so for now, just take, let's learn that healing prayer. Lord, fill me. Fill so and so with peace and harmony, feel the situation where peace and harmony repeat it again and again, and then ask Divine Mother, Lord, fill me with peace and harmony. And with, from the heart, the heart's feelings uplifted and directed, calmness first, perhaps I should have said, in that calmness of the heart, and then the love of the heart, the willingness to bring resolution and help outward, not just to ourselves, but outward to others. In the very act of doing that, we take the spotlight away from our own dilemma and shine it on the world situation, on others, and be an instrument for healing for other people. And in the process of trying to heal others, we ourselves are healed. And that's what this whole satsang week after week is about. Become instruments for healing, and we ourselves are healed in the process. I turn it